Hey guys, what's going on? Back with another Zombies video. And before I dive into the Malton Watch Easter Egg, I just want to say it's probably by far one of my most uh, prized possessions or prized solves. Because I started with Black Ops 2, I love the whole transit dark uh, theme and kind of apocalyptic world that they were in and Misty. And they were all pretty funny. I know people love Primus and Ultimus, but... It was just kind of a little bit different for me for, for Victus when I, like I said, I started with them. So it's always going to be nostalgic for me. And I always played the maps, always did high rounds before I got really interested into the uh, the backstory and uh, the Easter eggs and stuff like that. And another thing, the 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 numbers on Mar Martin's watch... Um, I've always kind of had an idea what it was, but like uh, Jason Blundell mentioned in his, I know he wasn't part of Victus, um, the original Victus maps and Transit, Di Diarized and Buried, but in his later, in Blundell's later maps, he mentioned a lot about ciphers being um, different levels of difficulty and double encrypted maybe even triple encrypted with revelation stuff that we just haven't solved yet this is similar to that where you can probably figure out what the numbers meant or had an idea but to know exactly what it was or to solve it you would have to know a couple other things and it's one of those it's one of those like i want to say thorns in my side but uh, or one of those taboo things where there might be a lot of people who have solved stuff in the zombies community, but because they don't have a channel back in the day, like I would say, honestly, going back 10, almost 10 years now, um, I've always heard rumors about stuff. And of course, there's the zombies community is very toxic, negative, toxic, because. I think everybody's just clung at each other to get to the top or get their name out there. And I'm always against that. Like, I always tell people I love theories. I love people trying to solve stuff on their own. Uh, I was very against the Jason Blundell going on channels and giving answers and stuff like that. Because uh, Jimmy Zielinski was right. People need to solve this stuff on their own. No matter if it takes 10 years, 20 years. Um, and this is one of them. It, it's so, so much more fulfilling if you solve it on your own. So, with all that being said, let me kind of just dive into it. So, as far as the watch and the numbers being a solve, a lot of people speculate, and this is where I kind of was hinting at or, or getting to, uh, 190438 being some type of time, some type of time traveler. Like, there was, I've always heard Marlton was a time traveler. Uh, people had a lot of theories about the number uh, on his watch, and... I even thought at one point it could have been GPS location uh, because I, I typed that into Google and, and it did bring me close to like Africa and um, you know where the buried location is. Uh, I forget where it is now on the top of my head, but around that area, um, you know, like Central Africa. Um, but anyways, so there were a lot of theories and the one that ended up being true which a lot of people got discredited, a lot of people got uh, mocked and ridiculed for, is that Marlton is a time traveler and the number on his watch is a date, being 1904, uh, March 8th, and, and stuff like that. But as far, like I said, as it being part of like what Jason Blundell would call, like, or, or the zombies community, not really Jason, but the um, zombies community would call it like a double or triple encrypted cipher of sorts uh, more like a, a visual cipher or visual easter egg uh, than it is a cipher easter egg you could probably like like i said most people knew that it was a date of some sort um uh, people said he was some type of a time traveler people making up their own little story and that was what turk usually went off of but um to actually have to solve a what the date is you have to know a couple of things so what i did to make it a little bit easier, I flipped it upside down, and it could, technically speaking, it could be a stopwatch, it could be uh, 19 minutes, 4 seconds, 0.38 of a second, whatever, um, it could be an actual date, and stuff like that, 
But just for the sake of it, let's just say it was just a number in his calculator. But here comes the part where it's like double or triple encrypted where, like I said, you can know the date. You can probably more or less guess that he was some, time of a tra some type of a time traveler. Um, but so you would have to know that Marlton is based off of the dad who is George McFly from Back to the Future. He doesn't wear the watch because... Um, what Treyarch has done, has always done, or have always done, is they can't put all one Easter egg on one thing because it could start being trademark or, or copyright infringement. So they have to spread out, and before I go, well, I'll, I'll mention that more in the future and stuff like that. I mean, in a couple minutes. Um what you have to realize is they can't just base his entire character Marlton off the dad from Back to the Future. They can't just make him with the same exact tie, same exact. I mean, they do kind of have the same exact haircut. I should probably flip it this way; it looks a little bit better. But I was just doing that for the the time um, reference or the number on on the watch. Uh, so you have to kind of realize that his he was based off of, and this is where some people were right. Like ever. I, like I said, started in Black Ops 2, was not really into the, the backstory of the Easter eggs. I just loved doing the high rounds and trying. I remember even like round 13 was a high for me at one point, but that's kind of what everybody goes through. Um, but anyways, George McFly is um, Marty McFly's dad. Marty McFly being the actual time traveler himself. And Marty McFly is the one who actually wears the Marlton watch. But if they put a character with a red vest on, maybe holding a camcorder uh, with jeans on and white sneakers, that would obviously be a copyright infringement and Activision Triarch would get sued, Call of Duty uh, would get sued. So what they did is they made the dad, the, the character, made him Marlton and they put his, uh, his son, I mean they could be a backstory, maybe Marlton in the future looking for his son, who knows. Uh, maybe Marty gets stuck in a certain decade, that'd be kind of cool, or a certain century. Uh, because you have to realize, tra uh, Transit Buried, Transit Diaries and Buried 1, 2, and 3 are based off of Back to the Future 1, 2, and 3. Like DLC 1, um, or Map 1, the Victus Map 1 Transit is basically Back to the Future, the first part. And keep in mind, um, it's a hard pill to swallow even for me, but... Um, we really maybe got like 10%, 20% of what Transit was supposed to be. It's supposed to be uh, a present day and Transit Returns, supposed to go back to 1955, kind of like Back to the Future, uh, they jump around different times. We really only got like 20% of uh, what Transit was supposed to be. Uh, I would guess you can kind of say Die Rise being Back to the Future 2 and the most obvious one, uh, Buried being a, a western underground town. Uh, is based off of Back to the Future 3. I won't get too much into any of those, just more sticking to the watch. And if you want to kind of jump ahead, maybe I'll eventually make a video about, about it, but you can jump ahead and watch the movies. They're iconic, um, Americana, you know, type movie, timeless classics, all, all that stuff. It's definitely worth buying, holding on to, even mostly now because it's part of the whole zombies lore. It's definitely, I recommend watching and, and buying it and, and stuff like that. Uh, so anyways, so Malton being based off of George McFly wearing his son's watch, Marty McFly. So if you type in Marty McFly, uh, you'll see his watch. Um, and, and this is probably where I'm just going to end it. Like, uh, I'm not going to get too much into, I mean, I'm doing this now too because the new... Uh, Call of Duty Cold War is coming out and rumor is and there's a lot of Easter eggs hinting at Buried maybe being on disc which is Back to the Future 3 uh, maybe Transit will be on disc maybe even Die Rise will be on disc I don't know how they're going to do it um, but I try and now space things out where it, it kind of coordinates what Treyarch is doing so people uh, can now go back and say, oh, that's what the watch meant and stuff like that. So that's not the solve itself. Okay, so, but you just, that's the first part of it. You have to know that it's based off Back to the Future, uh, and it was Marty McFly's watch, uh, and Martin's based off the dad. 
and I just kind of zoomed in, um, and obviously it looks different, they're not going to put Casio on there because that's also trademark and copyright infringement, but you just have to know that, um, you know, the watch is big. I mean, they could put an amazing backstory down the road. I think the, the maps are probably already made, the remastered ones, so they can't kind of dive into the story. But it would be cool if, like, maybe Marlton and Victus were looking for his son uh, of sorts. Um, it would be even cool, like, if his son was, like, uh, somehow, like, uh, the weasel or something like that from Mob of the Dead. But they'll probably keep it all, all separate and different. So... George McFly, like I mentioned, is the dad who Martin is based off of, and this is where the actual solve gets uh, confirmed, is he was a big science fiction fan in the movie, and I probably should have included it, but I stupidly forgot. He has a notepad, and that notepad is underneath Ted's uh, seat in transit. That's why that notepad's there, and uh, I'll probably do another video for that, but it's a little bit of a uh, uh, an Easter egg, I guess, in sorts, or... Um, a little bit of an extra bonus for you guys. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about the the uh, notepad that's underneath Ted's uh, seat. So, anyways, uh, in the movie, George McFly was the kind. Of, obviously, I'm going to say he was like a nerd or a geek, and um, he got ridiculed for being into science fiction. He was very nerdy. He had a lot of science fiction talk, and that comes into play in the later movies. But in the first movie. Um, they go to 1955 because uh, Doc gets killed in 1985, so they have to go back 30 years uh, to stop a couple things from happening. Um, but when they get back to 1985, because of the events that they changed in 1955, um, the, the dad now is a famous science fiction uh, writer, uh, author, novelist, whatever. So one of his books, or his first book that he wrote, I believe, is uh, A Match Made in Space. And I guess it's telling how um, the guy on the left being George McFly met his wife on the right. Um, and I'm not going to get into the person in the yellow. You have to see the movie. I don't want to ruin it. and It's going to just drag out this. Um, so anyways, you would have to know that he's a science fiction author. And that itself is the solve um uh, the solve or I guess um part of it you know like i said you have to kind of know a lot of things so you have to now at this point you have to piece together 1904 38 marlton's watch back to the future george mcfly and i like explaining how my brain works and this stuff took months to figure out maybe even years because i had a hunch what the 1904 probably meant but to kind of do the extra legwork, because most people would just make a video with a date and, and whatever. And a lot of people were wrong with it anyways. Actually, everybody was wrong with it. So um, I, I hate to... That's going to sound cocky. I'm not trying to sound cocky or arrogant. But everybody was wrong with their theories about the, the time and the number. Anyways, the only thing that I've heard was the time traveler part um that i'll confirm was right obviously because it hinted at back to the future and stuff like that so like i said again 1904-38 calculator watch marlton victus transit george mcfly um so what you would have to have done was you would have to have known all that and people probably figure out maybe one thing like sign uh, back, uh time travel and, and time and stuff like that uh, I don't even know if that's something that Treyarch might have even put out there to, to kind of light the fuse uh, for people. But you would have that just uh, hinted at, and you'll see here, 8 3 1904. Clifford Simak was a famous, if not maybe the first, uh, one of the first science fiction writers. That might be why uh, Jimmy and the devs decided to put him in there. But he was a, a big science fiction writer. Um, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Minnesota, none of that looks like it fits into anything. Uh, I, th it just looks like it was to hint or, or pay homage or respects. And then on the other hand, like I mentioned, we got me like 10 or, and I keep laughing. I, I, I hate to laugh because it was a serious matter back in the day. But the truth is we only got like 10-20% of what transit was supposed to be. It's supposed to be its own camp zombies campaign. Stuff that people have always asked for. But because the way Activision runs, um, and I'm not trying to diss on them, but 
the way Activision runs in the gaming industry, you have to pump out titles. You have literally tens of thousands, maybe even millions of shareholders um that you know they want to make a profit so you have to pump out title after title and the unfortunate thing is people will pretty much buy anything um you know year after year uh so what they did they stripped down transit uh i know like i tell people the unfortunate lie i'm gonna say is yes there were console constraints but a lot of it had to do with time and uh, time budget management and and what activision games take like five eight ten years to make some of them uh, i've seen what activision expects from some of the devs they have to do it in a year two years three years well back then i think it was like a three-year cycle a two-year cycle but um maybe somehow there are hints of science fiction in transit if you listen to the quotes about ufos and that is the the core of uh, Treyarch zombies and stuff like that being science fiction, you know, 115, Bob Lazar, Area 51, all that stuff. So who's to say they weren't going to kind of write a character based off of the author? Maybe his books came to life or uh, maybe we were like supposed to be involved in his, his stories and stuff like that or be part of it. Uh, it is pretty much pretty much based off of movies. Uh, like 80% of zombies is based off of movies, uh, some of it being video games and stuff like that. But you would have to have known all that or pieced all that together to know that it was paying homage or hinting at what was to come. Maybe there were going to be more science fiction. Um, theories that I have um, is that, you know, in Extinction, it, it bears very sim similarities, and it did got, get right into the same story. It is part of the whole um, Call of Duty, you know, lore and the ether extension did get written into it. So maybe somehow they're going to piece it all together and uh, have more alien science fiction stuff, um, aspects, whatever, uh, or components, whatever, written into the whole ether. But the way Transit was received, in, in my opinion, it looks like they just scrapped all the science fiction. I mean, Blundell did end up doing um, Apothecons and stuff like that, and more fairy tale like um, which is another Easter egg in itself. But I'll eventually, maybe years down the road, make videos about what all that meant, uh, the, um, the dragons and all that stuff. Uh, so anyways, um, August 3rd, 1904, and again... Uh, 1904, August 3rd, they obviously scrambled it, um, not making it very obvious. And it worked, because it's been almost 10 years and nobody figured it out. But, uh, do I have anything else? Okay, right, so, I don't, I think I would have had his biography, but I don't want to kind of go into it too much. But, aside from all that, he made tons of books, dozens of books, and I'm not going to, um read every book uh and i probably should because i'm sure in there somewhere is something from transit diaries or buried aside from back to the future and aside from the poster in kino Dutoin. uh and that's the thing too it's a mashup zombie maps uh i guess when the director or the devs or, or the level designers make a map it's a mashup of different things from pop culture which I would never want them to go away from that. It's just amazing. You know, it makes you feel like you're part of a movie. Um, and that's where I love, like, the whole IMAX slogan. It's like you're being part of a movie. Um, the way Treyarch does stuff, um, you're being part of movies that you grew up watching. And, and it's pretty nice how they did that. Um, but... Having said that, like I said, he wrote so many books. I did skim through them on Wikipedia trying to find something that has to do with zombies. Uh, but didn't really find anything yet, so I'll have to keep looking. And then again, like I said, it could have been some road that Jimmy was going to go down. But um, because of what happened with Jimmy and Treyarch, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, we probably won't get to know where they were going. Uh, I mean, like I said, Transit, Diaries, and Buried might be coming in the Cold War, so we'll see how that goes. 
Anyways, I'll leave it at that. Uh, I'll sum it up real quick again one time. 1904-38, Marlton Watch, Transit, um, time travel. Like They were supposed to actually time travel back to 1955 in transit. It was going to be called Transit Returned and it returned back to normal, hinting at, you know, back to the future. Uh, that is Marlton's, uh, who Marlton's based off of, which is George McFly's dad. Uh, you should obviously see the movies. Um, again, it's very worth uh, buying or investing in, especially if you're a big Zombies fan. And there's the watch. Obviously, they're not going to put Cassio on there. And he, his dad was a science fiction writer, uh, hinting at a real-life science fiction writer. Unless there's something in there I'm missing. I mean, Clifford Donald Simak. Uh, I don't think there's any Easter eggs down the road. Obviously, Blundell and Jimmy Zielinski didn't get along, so he kind of just uh, threw all of Jimmy's work to the side. But maybe, like I said, down the road, he was gonna, Jimmy was gonna eventually do something with these books. Maybe put them more into the maps and stuff like that. So, anyways, uh, that is it. I'll see you guys later. Thanks.